Welcome to the Scrum.org Community Podcast, a podcast from the home of Scrum. In this podcast, we feature professional Scrum trainers and other Scrum practitioners sharing their stories and experiences to help learn from the experience of others. We hope you enjoy this episode. Hi, everyone. I'm Ryan Ripley with Agile for Humans and professional Scrum trainer with Scrum.org. I'm stepping in as a guest host for episodes highlighting the experiences of other Scrum.org professional scrum trainers. I hope you enjoy getting to know these amazing people. All right, welcome to another episode of Becoming a Scrum Master. I'm your host, Ryan Ripley. Joining me today, fellow professional scrum scrum trainer, uh, Suleiman. How are you doing? I'm good, Ryan. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, nice to be in your channel. Uh, very happy to be there. And yeah, let's get started. Yeah, let's do it. We'll jump right into it. I like that. Good energy, yeah. right? So let's exactly. just go. <laughs> So can you share the story of how you first encountered Scrum and what motivated you to become a Scrum Master? Uh, yeah. Was there a particular moment or experience that really sparked your interest? Yeah, a very good uh, question, actually. So I discovered Scrum back in 2015. So nice. I was a software developer at that moment. And one of my managers asked me some question. Uh, Suleiman, how can we improve the way we are delivering our products to our customers? Because we're facing many difficulties on delivering the products, you know, the right way or delivering the, what the customer was expecting. We were having many back and forth. Things were really absolutely messy. So he asked me that question and I tried to figure out how we can improve things. That's how I discovered Scrum. And since that moment, I can say that I felt in love with this framework. And yeah, it helped me to you know navigate through different challenges, different other industries until now. Oh, that's wonderful. And that kind of leads into the next question I'd like to pose. You know, once you got into using the framework and, and you're kind of getting this experience with Scrum, was there this big eureka moment or light bulb moment where you just saw how how powerful Scrum could be in product development? And if so, could you describe that? Yeah, actually, I do have something that is popping directly on my mind. It was still on my early uh, beginning, on my early journey, because we were in a company in which it was very difficult to talk about agility because it was known as a heavy or, you know, a very heavy, let's say, company. So Scrum helped us uh, build a software that was really challenging for that company because we had competitors that were gaining market shares and things were going very fast and we needed to deliver something into the hand of the, the customers very early. And with Scrum, we achieved in a couple of months to release the first version of our product that helped us, you know, maintain a couple of our, let's say, most critical customers into our market shares and start to gain back the market share and to start winning again our, our, our customers and yeah, uh, to still be relevant in that company. That the first thing I can consider as my success story with Scrum and it was our ah, moment. We can do great things with this framework. So what was it about using Scrum in that context of having to deliver? Like, how did, is there something that, it, that Scrum did that really allowed you to achieve that, that, that yeah. rapid delivery? Yeah, especially the, the fact that we were in an incremental approach. It was something that was totally new in that company. It was okay. even unimaginable to, to think about delivering things in an incremental way. So it was really a game changer in our context and in our company. It's really cool to see the impossible become possible, right? Exactly. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So the next question is more about the Scrum Master role, or as we call them now, the accountability. Um, so how has, or whether, and maybe how is presumptuous, you know, if your perception about the, the execution of the Scrum Master role has evolved, you know, how has that changed? And are there, you know, aspects of the role that you view differently now compared to when you first started back in, in 2015? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it totally changed the meaning. And mainly it changed when I started the PST journey. Uh, I can say that very proudly. And I'm even recommending many Scrum Masters that are you know uh, very uh, familiar with the framework and that are using, who are using the framework very often. I'm suggesting them to go through that path because it will be a learning opportunity, first of all. Why I'm saying that? Because when I was starting with Scrum, I was doing things that today when I am, you know, sharing it with other people, I can even laugh because just an example, how I was doing my daily Scrums, it was in front of my flip chart, 
taking yep. my notes, asking questions, reporting everything else. And at the end, I send an email to the managers uh, informing them what we have decided. So <laughs> it was not exactly what a daily scrum should be. But I, you know, uh, start, uh, continue to learn, to discover more about it. And it's an opportunity again to thank you again, because your book, meaning Fixing Your Scrum, helped me a lot during my PST Great. journey. This channel, it helped us a lot. Uh, maybe you don't know who are following it, but uh, it's a having let's say a lot of value to the the subscriber of this channel personally i'm recommending this channel to, to to many people and yeah i continue to learn to learn to discover and the PST journey helped me a lot and they mainly changed my mind of thinking about the framework and what i can say is that one of the most thing i re rediscovered with uh, with this journey was to understand or to do not fall into the trap of you know thinking scrum about only the mechanics the mechanics of Scrum, but start thinking about the value, the impact, yep. the outcome, and the customer. Yeah, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I, I before starting the Scrum Master or the professional Scrum trainer, the PST journey, I thought I was smart, and then the uh, <laughs> I went through it, and I was like, "Ooh, I've got so much more to exactly. learn." Exactly. It was <laughs> exactly. I, you know, that's back when we were face to face a lot, and. Uh, I had Stephanie Ackerman do the the train the trainer process that doesn't exist anymore. But um, yeah, it, it's it's humbling, and you know she's awesome exactly. at what she does. And um, mm -hmm. but yeah, you come out of it going, I need to learn so much more. It's great, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. The same situation. <laughs> so kind of along that thread. So you've already given some advice of going through the PST journey, but for those who don't want to be a trainer, right? Let's just say there are some people that they prefer not to go down that path. What advice instead would you give them, you know, for someone that's still aspiring to become a scrum master, you know, is there a particular mindset, skill, habit, uh, you know, aside from continuous learning that we've already really kind of hammered on, right? That you believe is crucial for success in this role. All right. First of all, uh, the first uh, um, recommendation or um, advice would be, even though you are not interested in becoming a trainer, I would advise because on my side, it was very, really helpful. I would advise at least to attend to a class, a professional Scrum class. I think it will be very interesting because many people are learning Scrum from different sources. Yep. Everyone is uh, writing about the framework in the internet, we can have different sources, but attending a professional scrum, I asked myself the first time I attend to a professional scrum class, I told myself I would like, I have attended this class years ago. Yep. First recommendation. And regarding the skills and the mindset, I do think and believe that a scrum master is someone who, let's say, I don't want to say love people because it's too uh, <laughs> yeah too 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 far. But what I want to say is that someone who needs to have a good relationship skills and someone who needs to be uh, in touch with people and who can feel meaning what they uh, what they are they are they would like to change and who can support them who who has empathy I would say and who can support them into you know achieving their challenges and tackling their impediments. I think it would be a uh, good advice for a Scrum Master to develop that skill and mindset. I don't know if that answers your question. Oh, it's great. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. That ability to understand where your allies are, that ability to read a room, that ability to kind of have empathy for others. Because, yeah, you know, something that, you know, and, and maybe this isn't exactly what you intended, but um, for me, it's, you know, looking at managers and how badly they're treated during transformations and trying to have some empathy for what they're going through and yeah, yeah. You know, understanding that we're all just people trying to do what's best for ourselves and our families. And, exactly. mm. and, you know, I think all of that understanding is so important because if you can, if you can sympathize with a manager mm -hmm. and, and deliver things in a way that's beneficial to them too, then you have a friend as opposed yeah. to a blocker, right? Yeah, instead of opposing people, you're totally right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. No, very cool. I wholeheartedly agree. I think it's a great, awesome. great piece of advice. Mm -hmm. So, last question I've got for you, and uh, really appreciate <laughs> you doing this. Uh, what is one book that every Scrum Master should read? So, you've mentioned fixing your Scrum, and I really appreciate that. Um, yeah. You know, I'm I'm glad that that book was helpful. But aside from fixing your Scrum, what would you say is a book that every Scrum Master should pick up and read? 
I would say that this one from Gunter. I do like oh. it a lot. Yes, it's a very concise book, and inside you can learn a lot about mindset of the framework. You Absolutely. can learn a lot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Gunther's um, Scrum Pocket Book, or is it Pocket Guide? I think it's Pocket Book. Exactly. Um, yeah, Smart Travel Company and a Pocket Guide. Wonderful, exactly. wonderful, wonderful book. Wonderful so, one. Yeah, very good. We'll <laughs> add that to the show notes and make sure that uh, people check that out. Gunther's work is uh mm. his blog his books his videos always great to check out i try to catch every yeah. one of those when he he doesn't publish so much anymore but when he does i always get that alert so hopefully everyone's getting alerts on these videos too right yeah it would be great <laughs> i'll tell you what i really appreciate you doing this um certainly a lot of fun and, and interesting answers is there anything you'd like to promote or put in front of the channel before we uh wrap this up yeah, thank you, first of all, for this opportunity to discuss with you, to meet you, because it's an honor to, to meet you, I would say. Uh, okay. Something I can promote, why not my services, right? Because if you are in Africa and you are interested in agility and you would like to uh, someone who help you to, you know, agile, to transform, to, to, to embrace agility or to, uh, you know, implement Scrum or to discover the, the framework or learn about it, you can reach out to us, youragility.com. It's our uh, website. And yeah, I would be glad glad to help awesome well thank you again so thank much you. for doing this it was great meeting you and i, I you, hope man. you get a chance to uh meet in person someday exactly thank you goodbye